So today is our fourth lecture and the second lecture on financial markets and we'll be finishing the chapter today. Uh, so one thing you guys will notice is that I already have things written down. That's because I've been talking for the last 15 minutes without realizing that I wasn't really recording myself. So all of this is all here. I guess I just have to start talking again. So there are two things that we're going to be covering today. Uh, one is something called high powered money. In the book, you will see it denoted as H D and the reserve ratio, that's number one. And the second thing we're going to talk about today is something called a liquidity trap. So before we get started, notice that in our last lecture, uh, we had made an assumption. And the assumption was that the money supply in the economy was only supplied by the central bank. And they did this through open market operations. Uh, let me use a better thing. So effectively, when the government or when the central bank wanted to increase the money supply in the economy, they started buying bonds. And when they wanted to reduce the money supply, they started selling bonds. Effectively, that was it. But this is just a simplifying assumption. That's not really the case in the economy. And we're going to relax this assumption today. And by relaxing this assumption, well, the scenario in which we arrive is one where money is supplied by both the central bank and also the commercial banks. So remember we had covered this in the last lecture is that money can be broken down into two components. One is the currency that we hold, the cash, the notes, and the other is checkable deposits. Okay, so when we talk about currency, uh, we talk about currency, it is true that this part of the money is supplied by the central bank because commercial banks or any other organization do not have the authority to start printing currency. So only the central bank can do this. However, we also keep our assets, our wealth, in banks in the form of uh, checkable deposits. And central bank is not really involved in this process. This is done primarily through uh, commercial banks. So for example, I have two bank accounts, one in Bragg Bank and the other in, uh, what's it called, Southeast Bank. So the money that I have in my wallet or the money that I have in my drawers in my cupboard, those are the currency that I'm holding. That money is supplied by the central bank and the money that I have in my bank accounts, most of my money, that's supplied by the commercial banks. So once we relax the assumption from lecture three and we allow money to be supplied by both the central bank and the commercial bank, something interesting happened. So to see what, we need to first talk about demand for central bank money. Okay. Now, we, we've seen that, we've already seen how to calculate money demand. And the calculation what was quite simple because in our previous lecture, we were assuming that money only is issued by central bank. But now that we're assuming that commercial bank and central bank can both supply money, what is the demand for just central bank money? So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Obviously the first thing is demand for currency by people. So the money that you want, the cash that you want to hold. That has to be supplied by the central bank obviously because commercial banks can't issue notes. But the second thing, this is something new, 
is the demand for reserve by banks. So I'm expecting most of you do not know what reserve is. So let me talk about that for a while. So think of this scenario, okay? So suppose in a bank, 10 people are depositing money. And suppose, just to keep things simple, each of these 10 people are depositing 100 taka in the bank. So as an aggregate, the bank has 1,000 taka as its total deposit. Now, what is the bank going to do with this 1,000 taka? It's either going to loan it out to people who want to take loans or the bank is going to invest this money because, you know, the bank is a business and it needs to make some profit, let's say. So when I deposit my money in the bank, it's not a case that the bank just let the money sit in its vault. The bank actually takes my money and lend it out to other people who are looking for loans. The problem with this issue is that in our example, this bank has 1000 taka as total deposit. If it were to lend out this entire 1000 taka and tomorrow I go to the bank and I want to withdraw, let's say 20 or 30 taka, I won't be able to do that because the bank no longer has my money. It has given it out to other people. And so that would create an issue is that so to overcome this issue what the central bank does is it imposes something called a reserve ratio so suppose the reserve ratio is 10 percent for example so when a central bank imposes a reserve ratio on commercial banks what this simply what it simply means is that the commercial bank must hold 10% of its deposits in its vault. So when a bank has total deposit of 1,000, 10% of that 1,000 is 100 taka. And so a bank must always have at least 100 taka in its vault. It can have more, but not less. That way, when I go to the bank and I want to, let's say, uh, take out part of the money that I have already deposited with the bank, I can do that. And that's why we have something called reserves. Now let's think about the demand for central bank money, cash. What is the demand for cash? How do we calculate the demand for cash or cash or currency? The first thing is obviously how much the people want to hold. So if I suppose if I want to have 2,000 taka in my wallet, the demand for currency is 2,000 taka. But now, banks also have to hold some currency. Banks can't take deposits and lend out everything. Part of the deposit has to be held as cash in the bank's fault. And so demand for reserves by banks is also part of the demand for central bank money. So let me just write down by commercial banks so that there is no confusion. Uh, so if it isn't clear, let's just look at an example. So suppose uh, there is a person who has 100 taka. Now, from this 100 taka, what he wants to do is he wants to hold 20% as currency and 80% as checkable deposit. So basically, he has 100 taka. He wants to keep 20 taka in his wallet and he wants to deposit 80 taka in his bank account. And suppose that the reserve ratio is 10%. Now, what is the demand for central bank money? Now, first of all, he's going to hold 20% of his 100 taka as currency. So 20% of 100 is part of the demand for central bank money. But on top of that, this person is going to deposit 80% of his 100 
with the bank and the bank can only lend out 90% of this, which means 10% of the money that's deposited with the bank has to be held as cash. So 20% of 100 is 20 taka. That's easy to calculate. And how much money is this person depositing with the bank? 80% of 100 taka, which is 80 taka. And 10% of this 80 taka has to be held by the bank as reserve. So 10% of 80 is 8. 20 plus 8 is 28 taka. And this 28 taka is the demand for central bank money. So I've sort of written it down. In this example, currency demand is 20 taka. Reserve demand from banks is 8 taka. And together, there is 28 taka. This 28 taka is called the demand for central bank money. It is also known as monetary base or high powered money, which as I've already told you guys can be de denoted as HD. So if this isn't completely clear to all of you, so take a look here. So I have added a bit of an additional explanation you guys can go through that. And I actually tend to do that quite often is that after I've given a lecture, I often go back and add some extra explanation. This part, for example, and this part. So this is just to help you guys understand the thing better. So as you're going through the notes later on, hopefully you understand things a little bit better. So if you don't understand what high powered money is, hopefully this little explanation here will make things clearer. And another thing that we will do is we will be solving a few problems. There will be assignment relating to high powered money. And hopefully once we've gone through all of that, uh, things will become clearer to you all.